Good morning, modern steaders. This morning, we're going to divvy up and divide our meat chicks into two different chicken tractors. They're getting too big to have them all together. So let's go do that. Let's go get some chicks. Pluto saw the dog kennel on the tractor and she knows what that means. You know what? It's gonna be a lot easier if we just bring the kennel in the chicken coop with us. So we're just looking to move about 25 of them. We're not hurting them, we just like to make lots of noise. And then Pluto's moving around and stirring them up too. All right, we're gonna move this batch of chicks to their new chicken tractor. Luckily, they don't got a long commute. Pluto loves checking them out. Now that wasn't a bad commute. Let's get these guys into their new home. Well the plan was to have the silky back into New York City, and we'll do that after this. We were, and we were hoping to have the bigger roosters either in freezer camp or have sold them. But we've been busy building the off-grid outdoor kitchen project, so we've gotten behind on a few things, and that's life, so we need to learn to adapt and overcome.
We're gonna leave them in here with the bigger roosters, and when we have time, we'll process these two barred rock roosters. You guys ready? You ready? They're shy. Don't be bashful. Go ahead. There's more of you than there is of them. These guys don't want to play nice. Like I said, we always have to adapt and overcome. Those two roosters weren't having all the little roosters in here. I didn't want to come home from work and find a bunch of these little guys all beaten up. So we're gonna put the Silky in New York City where she came from. These two roosters, we're gonna have to process them when we get home from work and get them in the freezer. I was thinking about making today's video, I was trying to think what I was going to talk about and I decided I was going to talk about having to learn to adapt and overcome and roll with the punches and just work through what gets thrown at you on the homestead. Like I was saying, I wanted to already have these guys either sold or in the freezer, but we haven't had time because we've been working on the off-grid outdoor kitchen. I'll put a link to that playlist right here. You guys can go check that out if you haven't been watching it. It's a really cool project. I'm get looking forward to it and getting pretty excited. We haven't had time to do what we need to do with the roosters. So I was going to put 25 chicks in with them. When I did, you saw it. They were beating them up. I didn't want to come home and having a bunch of chicks look like Blackie did. I'll put a link to that video right here if you don't know what I'm talking about when our Icelandic chick got beaten up on. We're going to end up harvesting these two roosters and then we're going to turn them into boneless, skinless meat. We'll do that. So we are going to adapt and overcome a little bit more in the video than what I was expecting to have to do today. Good morning, girls. How are the apples, Mrs. Pigs? You been eating some apples too, Spots? So this next part's not a job that I take lightly, but if you're going to be a modern homesteader, it's something you're going to have to think about and decide if you're raising animals, are you going to be able to do this yourself. You want to be able to do it respectfully to the animal and quickly. It shouldn't be messy, you might get a little blood here and there, but if you do it right, the animal will be calm and you'll have a nice clean work area. You want to watch their feet. You want to make sure you have a nice sharp knife. And that's it. Just let them drain out. Let it be peacefully as possible. You're going to have kicking. You want to thank the animal right about now. All right, when we are harvesting our birds, we use a nice mora knife. I'll put a link to that in the video description below. And it works really well for harvesting and bleeding out the bird. When it comes to processing them into meat, it works, but it's not that thin. We really don't have a great knife for that yet, but we're gonna use a boning knife. If you had a fillet knife, that would work pretty good. So you just want to come in on the side of your breastbone and just cut down in there. Now being heritage breeds, you're not going to get big breast meats. They are smaller, but they have so much more flavor.
we enjoy eating our bod rocks more than we do the Cornishes. Our go-to chicken has been these birds. So that's a chicken breast. It's not huge, but it's packed with flavor and plenty of nutrition. So if you only have a couple of birds to do, it's the quick way to do it. We haven't even gutted the, we didn't even have to remove the guts of the innards of the animal. We're gonna put this right into our compost pile and compost it, and we'll turn it into next year's garden. One leg, and now we'll get the other one. I just want to follow all of the joints so you can get to the bone. Give it a good push, it dislocates it out of the socket, and then we can just spin it. And there we go. All right, then we just put the breast meat and the legs in a Tupperware container. I filled it with cool water and let it sit in there. And that'll just help loosen up and if there's any feathers on there, help get the feathers off. We're just gonna drain this a couple of times. All right, when things don't go as planned, but you have some pasture-raised, organic-fed chicken breast by the end of the day. I didn't wake up this morning thinking this is what we were gonna be doing, but it is. Now we have some nice chicken meat. It's organic fed, pasture raised, boneless, skinless chicken breast. We'll save that and we'll make some modern stata chicken marsala. And then we have some chicken legs. One thing I did notice, this is meat is darker. That is the silky barred rock Rhode Island Red Cross, where just the barred rock meat is a lot lighter. And same with the breast meat. So we're just gonna put this in freezer bags. I'm gonna put the four chicken breasts in one bag because they are smaller and we'll cook that up and make a nice chicken marsala with that. And then I'm going to put the four legs in another bag and we're going to freeze them. We'll make two meals out of the chicken for us. It didn't take that much time to process these birds and get them to put into the freezer. These two birds took less than an hour and that's with videotaping and taking our time. If you want to know more about processing your own food and being more in detail with photos, let me know because we're going to be starting our website soon. We can be doing blog posts on those. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it. It's really helping our channel grow. And if you know of anybody that wants to learn how to make boneless, skinless chicken breasts, share the video with them. And we'll see you right here tomorrow with our modern stetter update at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.